I am Courtney Zenz, the founder of Tiny Transitions, and I come to you every week with some new and interesting training tip to help solve your sleep struggles. So this week, I am talking all about false starts. And I wanna to begin today by explaining what a false start actually is because you may not be aware that your little one is currently experiencing one. So a false start is typically when your child wakes somewhere between 45 and 90 minutes after they go down for bed. It is what we refer to in the sleep consulting space as a false start. Typically, false starts are caused overwhelmingly by overtired, especially in children greater than five months of age. So when you experience a false start, they are most likely linked to a day where either the total amount of naps were off or the last nap to bedtime window was off, meaning your child was potentially overtired going down to sleep or they only slept, for example, two hours out of what should have been a four hour type of day. False starts happen on the regular when that particular day is a mess. A lot of times I see false starts happen on weekends because kids are busy going, 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 and then all of a sudden parents try to push the limit and then their little one wakes up at 9.30 after they just went down at 8.30 and you're thinking, what do I do? What's going on, right? So how do you address a false start when they happen? The first is gonna be balancing the consistency in their sleep. If you're gonna to plan to be traveling, you wanna to try to make sure you balance it and structure it so that your child is getting the right amount of sleep. And here's an example. If your child's over the age of one, they're currently taking one nap a day if they're somewhere between typically one and four, right? But if you're traveling at 10 o'clock in the morning, that motion is almost always gonna put them to sleep. So you have to make sure that in the afternoon, you're setting up time for them to get a second nap somewhere in there, whether you're maybe traveling home. With two naps a day, you wanna make sure that, for example, if your child is typically napping at 10 and 2.30 or somewhere around there, right? And at 10 o'clock in the morning, they take like a three hour nap and they're waking up at one, they're gonna fight that second nap. They're not gonna go back down because they already got the right amount of daytime sleep. So, you know, in those situations where your child's taking that really long first morning nap, but then refusing the second nap, but they do still need two, you're gonna to have to cut that first nap short. Sometimes it means capping it at about 90 minutes to make sure that the child has enough time to build up sleep pressure or what's called adenosine into the afternoon so they can go down for that second nap and then take a nice full cycle for the second nap and still have the good and proper timed bedtime that is appropriate. If your child is having an off day and you wanna to try to avoid having a false start situation occur, I would always encourage that you put them down earlier. An overtired child, what happens is by building up too much sleep pressure, the brain essentially says, well, wait a minute, you're supposed to be sleeping and you're not, so I'm gonna help you. It doesn't know any better, right? It's trying to do what's best for you. So it's gonna say, well, I'm gonna help you out if you're not gonna sleep, so here's some adrenaline and cortisol. Well, those are stimulant hormones, right? So all of a sudden your body, gets, your body gets flooded with stimulant hormones and then you fall asleep and then shortly after that you're wide awake, right? So you wanna pay attention to the right balance. Overtired is almost always the culprit. And if you're just beginning sleep training with your little one, it is something that will disappear within the first week. As the strength of independent sleep gets stronger, their ability to recognize how to go down, how to stay asleep, and how to consolidate cycles gets stronger and stronger. I was just on a client check-in call a few moments ago, and we talked a little bit about this. When a child first learns to sleep independently, they're a butter knife, right? And every single time they practice going down independently, they get sharper, 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 right? So by the end of the time, they're a steak knife, and they can cut right through that steak right, with no problem or challenge. Sleep's a skill set, and foundationally, that consistency is the number one thing that we need to do, and I get it, it's real life. Sometimes we are gonna have days that are frankly dumpster fires. We always wanna err on trying to avoid overtired in whatever situation we can, whether it means an earlier bedtime, it may mean a supported nap, you go for a walk, the days are gonna happen. That's the reality of it. The beauty is that with consistency, with the proper timing and with that strengthened skill of independent sleep, your child too can go to sleep and stay asleep the whole night.
Now, if that sounds too good to be true for you, or you are still struggling, you've tried a lot of different things, I want you to know sleep is complex. And I want to make sure that you know you can always reach out to set up a preliminary evaluation call with us. We offer free before and after calls. We'll jump on the phone for about 30 minutes. You can schedule a call with myself, or if I'm unavailable, I do book out a little bit in advance. You can also book out with one of the members of my team. We'll talk to you about what sleep coaching looks like. We'll talk to you about your results. Every family's different. Every parenting style is different. And frankly, every approach that we use with each family is different right? We need to make sure that we're building good, solid sleep hygiene for your family because that's what keeps your immune system strong. It's what helps you and them to feel at their best. And remember, in just a few weeks, I am kicking off my next Making Over Bedtime free five-day training that's going to take you A to Z through a lot of information to help ensure that you set a solid sleep foundation. If you have any questions below on False Starts, and I will comment and respond back on anything you may be struggling with, especially if you're struggling right now with those false starts. I hope everybody has a beautiful rest of the day. Thanks so much.